All right, so 1.1 starts going over graphing um, functions. The first thing that we're going to look at to see is whether or not an ordered pair is part of the graph. So it's going to give you an equation and an ordered pair. You're to plug in the x for x, the y for y, and simplify. If you get a true statement, that means that ordered pair lies on the graph. If you get a false statement, it does not. So if we look at example A, or example 1A, we have the function y is equal to 10x minus 7 with the ordered pair A, which is 2, 3. So we're going to start with A, which is 2, or sorry, 2, 13. Your x is 2, your y is 13. So we're going to plug these values into the y is equal to 10x minus 7. So y, we said is 13, is equal to 10 times x, which is 2, minus 7. Your 10 times 2 gives you 20, so that's 13 is equal to 20 minus 7, which is 13 is equal to 13. Since this is a true statement, that means that the ordered pair 2, 13 is a solution. For B, we're given the ordered pair negative 1, negative 3. So we're going to plug the negative 1 in for x and the negative 3 in for y. So this is going to give us negative 3 is equal to 10 times negative 1 minus 7. That negative 3 is not going to change. The 10 times negative 1 is negative 10. Negative 10 minus 7 gives us negative 17. So we have negative 3 is equal to negative 17. This does not equal one another. It's a false statement. So since it is a false statement, the ordered pair negative 1, negative 3 is not a solution. All right, for the next example, you're given the function 3x minus 2y is equal to 7 with the ordered pairs negative 3, 0, 4, 5 over 2, and 9, 10. And we're going to start with the negative 3, 0. Plug the negative 3 in for x, plug the 0 in for y. It's going to give you 3 oops, times negative 3. What was the minus 2 times y? Minus 2 times 0 is equal to 7. All right, so for this one, that 3 times negative 3 gives us negative 9. The negative 2 times 0 is just 0. So negative 9 plus 0 is negative 9 is equal to 7. Is this a true statement? No. So negative 3, 0 is not a solution. These are your notes for 1.1. For your next ordered pair, you have 4, 5 over 2. So your x is that 4. And then your y is the 5 over 2. So this is going to give us 3 times 4 minus 2 times 5 over 2 is equal to to 7. Your 3 times 4 is 12. The negative 2 times 5 over 2, the 2's will turn into 1's, so it's just negative 1 times 5, which is negative 5, is equal to 7. 12 minus 5 gives us 7, is equal to 7. This is a true statement, so we have that 4, comma 5 over 2, two is a solution. And then for your other ordered pair, you have 9, 10. So this you're going to have as 3 times 9 minus 2 times 10 is equal to 7. The 3 times 9 gives us 27. 
The negative 2 times 10 is negative 20. 27 minus 20 is 7. It's equal to 7. Once again, we have a true statement. So 9, 10 is a solution. For your next part, we're going to look at is graphing an equation. When we graph these equations, you're going to be working with a function table. You'll be given the function rule, giving, be given your x values. You're going to plug in your x values to find your y. So if we look at this example, we are plotting points using the function 3x plus y is equal to 6. First thing that you want to do with this equation is to solve it for y. So that 3x move over to the other side. You can move it over by subtracting it from both sides. So that would give you y is equal to negative 3x plus 6. You're going to, going to use that function rule with all of your x values. Plug in your x values for each of those, get your ordered pairs. So if we look at our x values, we have negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So plugging the negative 3 in, that's going to give us negative 3 times negative 3 plus 6. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. 9 plus 6 is 15. So that gives us the ordered pair negative 3, 15. For the negative 2, you have negative 3 times negative 2 plus 6. Negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. 6 plus 6 is 12. So that's the ordered pair, negative 2, 12. Next, you'll have the negative 1. So that's negative 3 times negative 1 plus 6. Negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. 3 plus 6 is 9. That's giving you the ordered pair, negative 1, 9. Next is 0, so that's negative 3 times 0 plus 6. Anything times 0 is 0, plus 6 is 6, so that gives you the ordered pair 0, 6. Then for 1, we have negative 3 times 1 plus 6, which is negative 3 plus 6, which is just 3. So that's the ordered pair 1, 3. Next we have the 2, so that's negative 3 times 2 plus 6. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, plus 6 is 0. So that is the ordered pair 2, 0. And then lastly, you have the negative 3 times 3 plus 6, which gives you negative 9 plus 6, and that's negative 3. So that's the ordered pair 3, negative 3. If we were to plot these ordered pairs on our coordinate plane, the first one you have is negative 3, 15, which does not fit on that coordinate plane that I gave you. However, the, two, the negative 2, 12 will, and it will be at this point here. So you're going to go 2 to the left and then up 2, starting from your origin. Next, we have negative 1, 9. So from our origin, go to the left 1 and then up 9. Plot the point. Next, we have 0, 6. So on your y-axis... You're going to plot the point at 6. Next, we have 1, 3, so we're going to go to the right 1 and then up 3, which gives us this point here. And then 2, 0, so just on 2 on your x-axis. And then 3, negative 3. Now we'll see with these points that are plotted, they do form a straight line, which means that it is a linear function. You also have two points here that are important. You have this one here, which is considered to be your y-intercept point, which is just 0, 6. Your y-intercept is always going to be the ordered pair that that line crosses your x, or sorry, your y-axis. This axis here is your y-axis. Then you have another important point which is this one here, and that is your x-intercept, which is the ordered pair 2, 0. So that one will always be something comma 0. So then 
that means that this is your x-axis. The next part that we're going to look at is finding your x and y intercepts algebraically. When you're finding your x intercepts, you're going to set y equal to 0 and solve for x. It will be the ordered pair something comma 0. For your y intercepts, you're going to set x equal to 0 and then solve for y. That will give you the ordered pair 0 comma something. If we look at some examples, we're going to use the given functions to find the x and y intercepts. For example, A, we have 3x plus 7y is equal to negative 4, or sorry, minus 4 is equal to 0. So if we find our x-intercepts first, that means our y is going to equal 0. So we're going to have 3 times x plus 7 times 0 minus 4 is equal to 0. Anything times 0 is 0, so that 7 times 0 cancels out. And you're going to work with 3x minus 4 is equal to 0. Move your 4 over, add it to both sides. That gives you 3x is equal to 4. Then divide each side by the 3 to give you x is equal to 4 thirds. This means that your x-intercept is the ordered pair 4 thirds comma 0. You still have to find your y-intercepts though. This is just one of the two answers. So if we find our y-intercept. So your y-intercept we find by plugging in 0 for x. So that means that we're going to have 3 Oops. times 0 plus 7y minus 4 is equal to 0. Once again, anything times 0 cancels that term out, so that's just 7y minus 4 is equal to 0. Add your 4 over. You have 7y is equal to 4. Then divide each side by the 7, and y is equal to 4 sevenths. So if you turn this into an ordered pair, that means that your y-intercept is the ordered pair 0, 4 sevenths. So you'll realize with these, you're always going to plug in 0 for the opposite term or the opposite variable of the intercept you're finding. So if you're finding the x-intercept, plug in 0 for y. Finding the y-intercept, plug in 0 for x. For example, b we have 6 plus 9y is equal to negative 18x. To find our x-intercept, again, we're going to plug in 0 for y. So that's going to give us 6 plus 9y is equal to negative 18 times 0. That negative 18 times 0 is just 0. So that's 6 plus 9y is equal to 0. From here, I'm going to move the 6 over by subtracting it from both sides. That leaves us with 9y is equal to negative 6. We divide each side by the 9 and simplify to get y is equal to negative 2 thirds. If y is equal to 2, or why did I do that for, that's your x-intercept, or your y-intercept, I'm sorry. So y-intercept, x is equal to 0. So that means that you have your y-intercept as the ordered pair 0, comma, negative 2 thirds. So I did these backwards. So if we were to find your x-intercept, not your y, we're going to plug in 0 for y now. So that means that we have 6 plus 9 times 0 is equal to negative 18x. The 9 times 0 is just 0, so that's 6 is equal to negative 18x. Divide each side by the negative 18. And you have simplified x is equal to negative 1 over 3. So that means that your x-intercept point is negative 1 third comma 0. 
For example, C, we have 3y is equal to 3x squared plus 6x minus 18. If we first find our x-intercept, we're going to plug in 0 for y. And that's going to give us 3 times 0 is equal to 3x squared plus 6x minus 18. The 3 times 0 is just 0. Thank you. And then from here, we're going to have to factor. So you do have a greatest common factor between all three of these terms, which is 3. So we'll factor out the 3 first to give us 3 times x squared plus 2x minus 6 is equal to 0. From here, check to see if you have factors of negative 6 that add up to be 2. Your factors of 6 are 1 and 6, 2 and 3. They would have to be opposites. None of these are going to give you 2 for your, your x value. So for right now, because I'm not, I haven't taught you anything else on how to solve this uh, trinomial for x, we're going to say that there are no x-intercepts. If we find our y-intercepts, we're going to plug in 0 for x. So this is going to give us 3y is equal to 3 times 0 squared plus 6 times 0 minus 18. The 0 squared is 0 times 3 is going to be canceled out. The 6 times 0 cancels out. So that's 3y is equal to negative 18. Divide each side by the 3 and you get that y is equal to negative 6. This gives you the ordered pair of 0, negative 6 for your y-intercept. For our next example, we have y is equal to x squared plus 5 minus 24. So for this one, we're going to find the x-intercept first, which means we're going to plug in 0 for y. So that's going to give us 0 is equal to x squared plus 5x minus 24. Factor this out. Your factors of 24 that add up to be 5, you have 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6. These are opposite signs. If the 3 is negative and that 8 is positive, that gives you a positive 5. So this factors to be 0 is equal to x minus 3 times x plus 8. From here, you're going to separate this and, so, and have both of them, both sets of parentheses, equal to 0. So that's going to be x minus 3 is equal to 0 and x plus 8 is equal to 0. Solve both of them. For the x minus 3 is equal to 0, add your 3 over. You have that x is equal to 3, which means that's the ordered pair 3 comma 0. For the x plus 8 is equal to 0, subtract your 8 over, you get x is equal to negative 8. That's the ordered pair, negative 8 comma 0. So you have two x-intercepts here, one that is 3, 0, one that's negative 8, 0. Find your y-intercepts now. For y-intercepts, your x is equal to 0. So that means you're going to have y is equal to 0 squared plus 5 times 0 minus 24. Your 0 squared is just 0. 5 times 0 is just 0. So that's just y is equal to negative 24, which gives you the ordered pair oops, for your y-intercept of 0 comma negative 24. For E, you have y is equal to negative 2x cubed plus 30x squared minus 112x. 
for this one, we're going to start by finding your x-intercept. So we're going to plug in 0 for y. So that's going to give us 0 is equal to negative 2x cubed plus 30x squared minus 112x. You have to factor on that right side. So your greatest common factor out of all those is negative 2x. So that's going to give us 0 is equal to negative 2x times x squared minus 15x plus 54, no, 56. Your factors of 56 that add up to negative 15 are negative 7 and negative 8. So this is going to factor to give you 0 is equal to negative 2x times x minus 7 times x minus 8. Every single part has to be set equal to 0 to be solved. So you're going to have 0 is equal to negative 2x, x minus 7 is equal to 0, and x minus 8 is equal to 0. For the negative 2x is equal to 0, divide each side by negative 2. That gives you x is equal to 0. For the x minus 7, add your 7 over. You have x is equal to 7. For the x minus 8, add your 8 over. That's x is equal to 8. So your x-intercepts for this one, you have 3 of, which is 0, 0, 7, 0, and 8, 0. For your y-intercepts, you're just plugging in 0 for x, solving for y. So that means you're going to have y is equal to negative 2 times 0 cubed plus 30 times 0 squared minus 112 times 0. All of them cancel out. So you just have y is equal to 0, which means your y-intercept is the ordered pair 0, 0.